gods are dead. But left on their own, men will always seek to take their place. Criminals! Your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until dead. Let your souls feed the first ones, and your bodies feed the land. The only result is pain and death. So today we're going to do a short demo of some of the content we have in this build of Path of Exile 2. We're starting here at about level 11, which is around halfway through Act 1. Right away as Jonathan plays with the graveyard, you're going to notice the massive improvements we've made to the Path of Exile engine since 3.0 was released. Environments, characters and items all use physically based rendering, which gives the whole game a realistic look. We have new main character class models with all new animations and completely new item based types. Most of these have physics for many of the little details, which makes them a lot more awesome. We put a lot of work into updating the skill effects throughout Path of Exile. For example, when you fire a split arrow, you really feel the individual arrows because some stick in the walls and others bounce off realistically. The 4.0 campaign contains a variety of optional side quests that lead to meaningful boss encounters along the way. Very soon we're going to encounter Lockwood, an NPC who has lost his family. My family! Where are they? Isabel and the boys were only to be gone for a few minutes, but it has been... I don't even know how long. Hours at least. Days. Weeks. What season is it? Stranger, I know we have just met, but I'm so worried about them. Around here, they could have fallen into a sinkhole or been choked by grave dust. Please, could you see to their safety? The game has changed a lot more than just visually, though. One of the things we have wanted to do for a really long time is to make fundamental changes to Path of Exile's skill system. The skill system in PoE is really cool and versatile. Personally, it's my favourite thing about the game, but there have always been some awkward things about it. We really wanted to find a way to address all of the shortcomings while not sacrificing even a single bit of the functionality that we already have. When you see the inventory here, you will notice something missing. All of the sockets on the items. This is because in Path of Exile 2, you no longer put gems into your items. Instead, the skill gems themselves have sockets, as you can see here, and there is a dedicated screen for socketing them. Jonathan's going to change his split arrow skill for Ice Shot, and we'll add some support gems to it. There are some really big advantages here. For one, every single item in Path of Exile 2 can be a six link. 
This is going to cause huge changes in how players design character builds. In the past, players didn't ever want to have more than one primary attack skill because they could only have one or two six links on a character at most. Now, it's totally viable to have multiple powerful primary attacks. The thing I'm really happy about though is you don't have to screw around with your gems all the time when you're changing items. Check out this bow here. The socket colors you get still come from your items, but now every single bow that drops will have exactly four green sockets. This means that we can swap this bow for this other one we have found, and we don't have to mess around with our gems. As we swap between the bows, we can see at a glance all the DPS values for our skills updating. It's still possible to fine-tune socket colors on items when you need to, but because everything that drops has fixed sockets, it's way easier to just pick something up and put it on while leveling. For new players, another really great advantage is that it's now impossible to socket a support gem into a skill gem that it doesn't work with. For example, this multiple projectiles gem can't be socketed into Leap Slam, but you can see with all the highlighted sockets that it will work with the other bow skills. Some of you will be wondering about skills like auras. A lot of the time in the old skill system, you'd throw a few gems together in a four link with few or no support gems. How can you do that when you have a limited number of active skill slots? The answer is meta gems. Meta gems are like super support gems that let you put multiple actives into them. For example, we want to run a few different auras on this character. We can put this proficiency gem into the character and load it up with auras. It even lets you bind a single key to enable all of the auras at once. Trigger gems like Cast on Crit are also meta gems. So this means you can put an entire Cast on Crit setup into one gem as one of your eight six links. One of the things we really wanted to improve in Path of Exile 2 was our lighting system. The new PBR rendering, in addition to a much more realistic light falloff, makes this area look significantly more awesome than what we could possibly achieve in the past. Them stop! They're whispering! They're screaming! No, don't give in! You're not dead! You're still moving! You're still here! One of the things that's really exciting about creating an entirely new campaign is that we get to apply all of our boss creation skills to early bosses as well. The first few acts of Path of Exile 1 have bosses that are some of the earliest content we ever made, and their age is really showing. This fight here is the same level as the Fairgrave's fight in the original campaign, but it's a lot more advanced.
Learn to let go of your burdens. So here we are in the hunting grounds. Now we're going to show you something that players have been requesting for a really long time. In Path of Exile 2 we finally have shapeshifting. Each shapeshift form can use any regular Path of Exile attack that makes sense. Here on the werewolf we're using Leap Slam and Cleave. One of the other things we thought that was really important with shapeshifting is that you could just change back and forth at any time, walking around in the middle of a skill whenever, just hit the button and go. One of the things you can see in this area is the new grass tech that we have. It's done using pre-computed ray tracing, it's both way nicer looking and has better performance than what we used to have before.
And that there is a small slice of Path of Exile 2. Among ancient ruins, evil grows once more. The seed of corruption advances, spreading dread and despair. We must give chase. Welcome to Path of Exile 2's second act. As you saw in the trailer, Act 2 is centered around a caravan of Marraketh called the Ardura who live in the Vasteri Desert. You're chasing another caravan from an opposing tribe called the Faradun. There's a set of large ancient gates blocking the progress of the caravan through a desert pass, so you're being sent through the traitor's passage to unlock them. We shall wait here, Jingak. But the military carts have departed for the gates. Make haste! Path of Exile 2 is a lot more than just new acts. We want combat to feel both brutal and responsive, even at low levels. We're ensuring that each weapon type has unique and different mechanics. Each weapon class feels different to play, and today we're going to start by demonstrating the new spear weapon class. Spears are a weapon class favoring mobility with both melee and ranged attack options. To that end, each spear will grant you at least one mobility skill. In this case, the spear comes with both an engage and disengage skill. When you engage, it increases your melee damage for a short time, and that really encourages you to be mobile during combat. One of the skills we're using here is called Whirling Slash. When you use Whirling Slash, it creates a sandstorm that grows in size each time you use the skill. When you leave the sandstorm, it explodes, dealing damage to nearby monsters. A great way to do that is to use the Disengage skill, which makes you fly backwards and throw projectiles. PoE 2, each area's mini-boss is a much more substantial fight with interesting mechanics. You'll be able to find at least one mini-boss in each area of the game. One thing I love about this boss in particular is that it destroys the ceiling when it slams the ground, letting in more light. Clever players will notice that if they're standing in the light, then they're not going to have any rocks falling on their head. The rapid assault skill that we're using against this boss does three rapid stabs, followed by a fourth stab that deals more damage and can stun, if you're willing to commit to a long attack time. While developing the skills for Path of Exile 2, we were really thinking a lot about designing skills that could be cancelled early to dodge, or you can commit to the full attack for maximum damage. skills we're using here is called Spear Field, which creates an area of spears coming out of the ground that impale monsters who walk into them, causing them to bleed. As the monsters move towards you, they take damage, so using your mobility skills as a way to move away from them is a great strategy here. 
Path of Exile 2, we've invested a lot in our animation system. I'm sure you're noticing the animations are looking a lot better than they did in PoE 1. But there's also a lot of subtle detail, like characters having different run animations depending on how fast they're moving. When we use a Quicksilver Flask here, you can see the character changes to a sprinting animation. Now that we've arrived at the Ancient Gates, we're going to show you another of the new weapon classes in Path of Exile 2, Crossbows. Crossbows are special in that they grant attack skills implicitly. This particular crossbow grants Power Shot, which is a high damage single target attack. In order to modify what Power Shot does, you're going to need to equip Bolt skill gems, which change the type of bolts that are loaded into the crossbow. Here we've got three different Bolt skills that the character can switch between depending on the situation. Armor piercing bolts. Incendiary bolts. Permafrost bolts can be used to disrupt packs of enemies to prevent them from closing in on your position. You can then follow up with armor piercing bolts to do plenty of damage. Outsider, join me in, battle. in this area, we're helping Asala, leader of the Ardura, to open the ancient gates and let the caravan through. Because the bolt types are the skill gems, support gems that are added to them will modify whatever the skill is that you're using. Here we're going to add multiple projectiles to our incendiary bolt. In Path of Exile 2, we're doing a lot more interesting things with monster packs. Here you can see some of the monsters patrolling around. Now we're coming to another example of a Path of Exile 2 mini-boss, Le'im the Impaler. The boss has dropped another type of crossbow, a Siege Crossbow. This crossbow grants the Siege Cascade skill. The skill is also modified depending on what type of bolts you're using. No! 
We tried to add a lot more little details to combat in Path of Exile 2. You might notice that the monsters who die while burning have charred corpses. We really want to make sure that there's a feeling that as you leave the battlefield, there's clear evidence of what combat took place there. This is the perennial king, the leader of the Faradun. His goal here is to prevent you from catching the caravan at any cost. has gone on long enough. The king is not the man I once knew. And sand swallow me if I do any more to enable him. You plan to continue your pursuit, yes? You will not catch him. Not without me. We cannot follow through the raging sands. Let us return to the caravan and question this defector. This is the Ardura caravan, your town in Act 2. I am Asala, the Sekima of the Ardura. I care not where you came from, nor what caste you might have been there. All that matters is that you have shown yourself capable in battle, Jinga. Remain a friend to the Ardura, and you shall have nothing but respect from us. From what your shade has told us, the situation is dire. This Balbalic will live or die based on her usefulness in pursuit of the seed of corruption. Ask her what questions you will, then we, Adura, will decide her fate. You need not trust me. You will see the truth of my information soon enough. 
I ask nothing of you. Only that you do what you know is right. One of the things we really wanted to do in Act 2 was to use the mobility of the caravan to allow the player to choose how they explore the act. Here you're given four options on how to proceed. There is a tribe of lost men that inhabits the Mastodon Badlands. They worship the bones of those long ago beasts. And that faith has given rise to powerful tasks that can somehow call on storms and strike enemies with lightning. The king wishes to steal these objects of worship and use their lightning in war. Do what you must. Though events demand you tread upon the valley of the dead, do not do so flagrantly. Keep your presence light, cleanse what corruption you can, and we shall skirmish with the Faradun to protect your flank. Once you've picked your destination, the caravan will travel to that area and come to a stop so that you can disembark and go on your quest. Because we just got the Storm Sphere skill as a quest reward, now would be a great time to switch back to spears and use some ranged abilities. Storm Spear fires a lightning projectile which splits on contact. The other skill we're using here is called Blazing Lance. Blazing Lance creates a trail of fire from the ground, dealing damage over time. However, if you're willing to stand in place for long enough, you can throw a second spear that will fan the flames for much more damage. We've just found a unique spear, it's called Devata's Wind. This spear has an extra modifier that synergizes really well with Storm Spear. When you disengage, you get two additional projectiles on your projectile skills.
the guards. Hey, you! What's going on? 